Hello. Uh, so we are on to key area three of unit two of uh, National Five Biology, and it is called uh, structure number. Uh, it's about reproduction. Basically, it's about reproduction in both plants and animals. This video is focusing on animals, but we'll give you a general introduction to what the whole key area looks like. Anyway. Okay, so this is a course specification of what you are expected to know. We're going to be touching on kind of all three today because all three merge. You do the plant equivalent and the animal equivalent. So we're going to look at all of this, but the animal part of it today or in this video and then the next video will be all of the plant stuff. So the layout goes, we're looking at the definitions of haploid and diploid. Then we'll look at the reproductive structures in animals and where they're produced. Then we'll look at fertilization in animals and plants. And then the second video covers reproductive structures in plants and fertilization specifically in plants. Okay, so in terms of stuff you hopefully remember from S1 and S2, you should remember that spale, spale, sperm is the male sex cell in animals, egg is the main female sex cell in animals, pollen is the male sex cell in plants, and the ovule is the female sex cell in plants. It's basically remembering what is male and female in, in plants or animals. Okay, so we're going to cover just now the different structures involved in reproduction in animals and where they are produced. Things you have to be able to do by the end of this video is state what is meant by a gamete, give examples of haploid and diploid cells, common exam question that comes up, name the male and female gametes in animals, uh, explain where the gametes are produced in animals, and give a definition of fertilization in animals. That's a very specific one. Okay, so in terms of gametes, so what is a gamete? A gamete is just a sex cell. So when we've said our sex cells are things like sperm and egg or pollen and ovule, we're just changing that slightly to use the proper biology word, which is gamete. So a gamete is just the formal name for sperm and egg and pollen and ovule. Okay, uh, so definitions of diploid and haploid. All cells, all normal body cells are diploid except from gametes, okay? They are haploid. Uh, diploid cells, important definition, they have two sets of chromosomes. Haploid means they only contain half of the amount of DNA needed to build a thing, um, and that means they contain one set of chromosomes. So to give an example, there are 46 chromosomes in human cells, normal human cells. That's the diploid number, okay? Um, but what happens in haploid cells, they would have 23 chromosomes. So 46 is two sets, haploid is 23, so that would be, yeah, that's it. One set of chromosomes. Okay, so in terms of the gametes found in humans, I've kind of already said this, remember gametes are sex cells, so if we're in males, our male gamete is the sperm, if we're in females, our female gamete is the egg. Now you need to know some of the basic structures that are found in the sperm cell. The course documents are slightly general about this, but we've covered everything just in case. So sperm is the male sex gamete in animals. Sperm are produced in the testes. Important yeah, fact that you need like to know. They like to ask that. Okay, they love to ask that one. Um, so it's got a head that contains the nucleus that has got the male DNA inside of it. It's got a midpiece that's got mitochondria. They are doing aerobic respiration to provide lots and lots of ATP so that the tail has enough energy available to move. Okay, so those are things that you need to know about the sperm cells and their structures. And that's a common thing that comes up in question sometimes is in respiration we'll be comparing like a skin cell and a sperm cell mm -hmm. and their mitochondria number based on the fact that sperm need to swim, they need to move, they need a lot of energy and really linking that stuff together. Okay and remembering that we do not say the idea of mitochondria producing energy, they can produce ATP or they can convert uh, chemical energy into useful energy like ATP. Okay, so in terms of the male reproductive structures you need to know, there are very, very few you actually need to know, even this is pushing it, but this mm. is from an SQA past paper. Um, you will see other diagrams which have way more in it. You do not need to know them. You need to know three things. You need to know the testes, or the, if this is in singular, if it's plural, it's an E instead of an I at the end. That is the site of sperm production. That is the most important one, mm. really. That's the one that gets asked about. You've got the sperm duct, which is where the sperm then travel along and you have the penis. But other than that, you do not need to know anything else for these ones. You might see them on a diagram, they might be labeled, they might be named, you will not get asked about one. So just ignore them. If you, The idea is we've included these extra things so that you know to ignore anything that's not the testes. Okay, the egg, and we'll look at the structure again. The SQA course notes want you to know a little bit about the structure of the egg. The egg is the female gamete in animals. It's produced in the ovaries. So that's the important site of production of ova or eggs. It's got a cell membrane around the outside. It's got a nucleus in the middle. It's got mitochondria. It's got ribosomes. It's got everything your typical basic animal cell has inside of it. It's also just extra fact, one of the biggest cells that can be found in the body. It's about the size of a full stop. So 
if you can stain them, you can actually see them with the naked eye, which is very unusual for cells, uh, animal cells, because normally they are far, far, far too small. In terms of female reproductive structures, you need to know, again, this is it. This is as many as you get. There might be more named, there might be more labelled. You don't need to know them. So, main ones you need to know, you need to know the vagina itself, you need to know the uterus, you need to know the oviduct, and you need to know the ovary, and the ovary being the one that is where the, the egg or the ova is actually produced. In terms of the oviduct, which is sometimes known as the fallopian tube, but apparently Nat5 think it's ridiculously too hard to ask you to remember that, mm -hmm. so you have to call it the oviduct. And the oviduct has a special function that it is where fertilisation occurs. So it is where a sperm actually meets an egg and the nuclei fuse, but we'll touch on fertilisation in a second. The uterus, this is where an embryo will actually implant. So if a sperm and an egg have met and they're fertilised and they're now going to be growing into a little baby, this is where that will happen in the uterus. But that is it. That is all you need to know. You need to be able to name those four and you need to be able to basically describe the, the oviduct and the uterus. But the oviduct is probably the most important one there. Well, and it. the fact the ovary is a site of egg production. I'm thinking of exam questions. If they showed you this picture, they'd either be asking you where is the gamete produced or... Uh, where does fertilization happen? Those are the only two yeah. questions. Uterus and vagina ask. don't really come up. Okay, uh, so comparing structures, the female gamete is the egg, the male gamete is the sperm. Where they produce the female gamete of the egg is produced in the ovaries, the male gamete, the sperm is produced in the testes. Okay, um, the number of gametes produced. For females, it's usually about one per month. You don't need to know this fact for National 5. For males, it's millions. So in a single ejaculation, they can have up to 120 million sperm. Uh, the main reproductive organs you need to know for females, you need to know the ovary, the oviduct, the uterus and the vagina. For males, you need to know the testes, the sperm duct and the penis. OK, so the number of chromosomes that are in the gamete, if it is human, it's going to be 23 chromosomes. If it's another animal, we just say that the number of chromosomes will be haploid. OK, now that's also known as describe the chromosome complement of this cell. You'll either say the word haploid or diploid. Okay. Yeah, so that kind of links back to the stuff we talked about when we did uh, mitosis and all that sort of mm -hmm. stuff. So if you've forgotten some of that stuff on chromosome complement, go back and watch that video. We also cover it when we look at inheritance a little bit as well. Uh, so it's useful to know about that. But again, if we were talking about what is the chromosome complement of these cells, you're using the word haploid or diploid. For humans, you do need to know the idea that humans, normal cells, 46 chromosomes, gametes, 23 chromosomes. Okay, so the final couple of things on this video, we have to talk about a zygote and fertilisation. So a zygote is what is formed when a sperm fertilises an egg. So when that sperm and that egg actually fuse in the nuclei fuse, they form something called a zygote. So the sperm injects its DNA into the egg. So there's now two sets of the DNA, which makes one full normal set because it's two haploid sets. So it makes one full diploid set. This is called a zygote, and a zygote is a thing that divides and grows and becomes eventually you, the human. Now, this is an important definition to know. Now, this definition is the general definition of fertilization, so it applies to both plants and animals. But the definition of fertilization is, it is the fusion of the nuclei, so two nucleuses of two haploid gametes to produce a diploid zygote, which divides to produce an embryo. That is something that should be on a flashcard for your own revision, is that you should be rehearsing those exact words, just like the exact words for osmosis, or what's another process, the exact words Diffusion. for? Diffusion. Diffusion, okay, is that you must have those exact words in. So again, fertilization, the fusion of the nuclei of two haploid gametes, so both the fusion of the nucleuses of both of those gametes to produce a diploid zygote, which will then divide to produce an embryo. So if we look at this specifically for animals, which again, I'd say do a specific flashcard for this, is just to put it into context. In animals, we would define fertilisation as a fusion of a sperm nuclei and an egg nuclei to produce a diploid zygote, which divides to produce an embryo. So it's just putting a little bit more context to that definition we've just said. OK, so to summarise the things you should know, a gamete is a haploid sex cell. Haploid is a cell that has one set of chromosomes. Diploid is a cell that's got two sets of chromosomes. The egg is the female gamete in animals. Sperm is the male gamete in animals. The testes is where sperm is produced. The ovary is where eggs are going to be produced. Fertilisation is the fusion of two haploid gamete nuclei to produce a zygote. And a zygote is a diploid fertilised egg. OK, so nice and easy. The well, next video is going to be looking at uh, plant reproduction, where we're going to be using some of these terms again, but applying them to plants.